This is the NBA Wire with Mateo Chang, episode four. Did you know that you breathe on average about five million times a year? Just thought you should know. Inspirational NBA talk with successful alumni to motivate you during your application run. We go behind the scenes of every story, talk business, and show you why it's worthwhile to never give up on your NBA dream. And now, here's your host with the most, Matteo Chang. What's happening, citizens of The Wire? Welcome back to yet another episode of the NBA Wire. Thank you so much for tuning in for yet another fantastic and impactful episode. Uh, before I get to get down to business, first of all, I need to give a shout out to a few very uh, special people who have helped me through this process. I'd like to give thanks to uh, Andres Eschini, to Gabriel Goulardines, Everton Barboza, Paulo Cesar Moraes, obviously. Paulo Cesar, you are awesome. Luis Zuliana, Luis Zuliani, I'm sorry about that, bro. And uh, Felipe Calbucci. So you guys have helped me out with uh, the interviews. You guys have, uh, you know, really stretched out your network and contacted people for me to help me with this, uh, to get these interviews off the ground. Can't thank you enough. Now, this episode, I want to talk about the application decision-making process. Now, I know I said that I will be providing you guys with interviews. I don't know. Maybe you've thought that it would be interview only. I'm also going to provide you guys with great content and give you some informational stuff. Okay. Now, not many people know about the decision-making process of top schools. I have had the amazing privilege to get the full insight from an admissions officer of a top school who, who preferred to remain anonymous, you know, obviously for <clears throat> you know, reasons not needed to be stated. So, first of all, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for providing such valuable information as a means to help my listeners. You know who you are, man. Or girl. Anyway, the information stated here may not apply to every school, and each of them will have their own variations. But this is definitely a great starting point to understand what you should expect after applying, or at least how your application is accepted or not. So here we go. After the school's application deadline, your applications are usually you know, uh, loaded onto iPads and laptops, usually through their internal servers or cloud servers. You know, today, cloud is a very big, uh, very big thing now, right? And then the admissions officers and second-year students, yes, some schools use second-year second students, they get access to them, and then they're required to evaluate your applications according to each of their roles. So this is just the very first review of your application, and there are many more to come, okay? Now, the main pers- purpose is to ensure that the application is completely filled out, that it meets the school's specific prerequisites, and also to evaluate the candidate's personal and professional trajectory. Now understand, they are going to read this in detail. It serves to filter out like the likely, quote-unquote, from the unlikely, quote-unquote. Am I supposed to say quote-unquote before the word or after? Anyway, and this is incumbent upon the reader the person who is reviewing your application to either recommend you or not recommend you for an interview, okay? Then your application is forwarded to a senior office officer with, you know, senior officers have an extensive experience to review it for a second time, okay? So understand this, first reviewer recommended you, perfect. Your application goes to a senior officer, man or woman who has been, you know, has been there for many years, and they, they, they can read through your print, okay? They know a lot about you just by, by what you say on, the, on your applications, okay? Now, wait, you say, oh, I got to recommend on the first one. Yeah, sure, but this, is, uh, this first recommendation is only the first filter. Now, the senior officer will check your profile, your past, present, future goals, your achievements, your failures, your personality, um, extracurricular stuff and how much you have gone beyond what is required of you 
uh, in your profession. Okay. Now the senior officer will match that with the school's fit and culture. Yeah, that's a biggie too. We're going to talk about the fit and culture in a future podcast. Now they're going to check that. They're going to match your application against the school's fit and culture to make sure that both of your interests are aligned. Okay. Questions that they're going to ask themselves include, does the candidate know himself or herself well? Or what is the probability of the student's success in his or her objectives should he or she is accepted into the school? Uh, These and many other questions have to be answered before the candidate receives a second recommendation. Still a long way to go. Okay. Note that the, uh, that the evaluations, the reviews from both both of the officers, they must be in line with each other. What does that mean? They, the story, the reviews need to be parallel. Whatever the first admission officer or second year student said has to match what the senior officer says in the review, or at least as much as possible. Okay. Now remember, the senior officer does not get to see the first officer's notes. Okay, all he gets is a recommend or not recommend. Okay, now if there is an obvious and blatant difference between the two evaluations, then you get one final chance. Okay, your application is then sent to the uh, admissions director for final review. Yeah, the the admissions director, the big Kahuna. Okay, for those of you who don't know what the big the big Kahuna is, Google. Now, the director is the one who can overturn any recommendation or non-recommendation of either officers, okay? Keep in mind that the uh, school will check your fit with its culture, okay? With its culture. Now, this is, this is something you're going to hear time and time again. Fit, fit, fit. Culture, culture, culture. And it's going to drive you nuts. And the only thing that can help you is you'll only understand, really, what the fit and culture is once you get there. But more on that later in a future episode. Back to this one. Now, considering your application went through, okay, you got first recommendation, uh, first recommended, second recommended, okay? This takes about three or four weeks after the deadline. You will be notified of your invitation for an interview, okay? Or or non-acceptance into the school. And I, I don't like saying rejected, you know, or denied, because it's just usually just harsher than it than what it really is. Okay, all right, all right, sure. Your application did not meet the specific conditions that each school seeks, or maybe you lack a little more experience. What you know, whatever the case may be, do not consider it like a rejection. Okay, it may be that your fit is not the same as the schools. Okay. Keep in mind that this process is less of a selection than it really is a matchmaking process, okay? Schools want the best possible experience for their students. You know, remember that they're, they're, these guys are experts at what they do, okay? They've shaped the school's culture and, and, and its accolades for years, okay? I, I, I would say that they know what they're doing, right? Trust in their decision should your application is not accepted, don't take it personally or anything like that, okay? Just, you know, they had their reasons and, you know, didn't work out. So now, if your application has been accepted and you've been called in for an interview, you may receive a few options, okay? One of the options would be to interview on campus at the university, uh, or another would be near your city of origin, you know, like your wherever you live, or in a large city nearby, depending on, uh, obviously, wherever you live. Now, in the second option, you will usually be interviewed by an alumnus. Now, some schools send their officers directly to the interview, uh, to interview you at your city as well, you know. Uh, some schools, including Harvard, Wharton, and MIT, their officers come or go to your city and they conduct the interviews there, okay? Harvard is a tough one. Wharton, uh, they're doing the group dynamics now. Yeah, you're you're going to be observed in a group situation and analyzed 
down to the final thread of hair. Okay. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages of being interviewed by an, by an alumni as well as being interviewed by an admissions officer. Okay. There are some of that, uh, which I will talk about in another future episode when I talk about the interview process. Coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. You know, hold your horses. We'll get there. All right. Right now, we're still talking about the application decision making process. Now, once you've done your interview, the interviewer will forward his or her evaluation of the candidate back to the school, uh, usually using a three or four, uh, four level rating system. Now, the three level rating system is categorized usually by admit, uh, carefully consider admission, or do not admit. While the four-level rating system is usually categorized by highly recommend, recommend, not recommend, and highly not recommend. Yeah, they really don't think you fit or there's something that they can't help you with uh, in that situation. So this is then sent along with the interviewer's evaluation report of the candidate and specific details of the interview. Yes, you heard that right. The interviewer will evaluate you on your interview. He or she will create a report and specific details of what you said in the interview, and they will send it back, okay? Back for review. So, okay, I know a lot of stuff, right? Backtracking. You had the first review from... An admissions officer, second year student, green light, go. Second review by a senior officer, green light, another go. Then you had a third review by an an alumnus or another officer during your interview, and then your evaluation is, is produced afterwards. That's the third review before gets into the hands of the final kahuna, which is the admissions director, okay? Now, let's, let's backtrack again a little bit. So, we, we've, we've been updated now. A lot of people, a lot of students come to me, they believe that once you're, they're called in for an interview, they're in, or at least practically in. This is myth. This is, a, this is urban legend, all right? Because the interview is where many candidates miss their opportunities. Let me repeat that. Many candidates miss their opportunities right here during the interview process. Do you want to know how to strengthen your interview? Yeah? Well, you're in luck because I offer a 8-series audio course on how to strengthen your interview for free. Yeah. Just subscribe to the newsletter on my homepage at www.thembawire.com and then you will receive it via email, okay? That's enough for my plug-in. Back to the application process. Now, once this interview report is in the hands of the admissions director, you know, he or she will review it thoroughly and will also provide his own recommendations or her own recommendations, which then would be to admit, consider for admissions, or not accept the candidate's application. Now, in the event your application is requested for consideration, it will then be forwarded to the admissions committee for review and debate. Right? There's a committee who's you know, going to look at your application and, and review everything. Yeah, all four reviews. Yeah, and finally, if there's if everything is in an order, order and all eva- evaluations are aligned and parallel, well, you the candidate, will receive the much-coveted admittance letter or email. All right? Should your application need further review, uh, it will then be categorized as admit, waitlist, or not accept. Ah, what happens if I get waitlisted? We'll talk about that in another coming episode. All right? Hold your horses. A lot of good stuff coming. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Many of you are thinking, wow, that's so much work. You know, is it really worth it to spend so much time on an application? You know, 
thousands of applications. Yep. It's all done for you. Okay, get that. A lot of candidates get the wrong impression of this selective process and think that some schools are too picky or even, you know, snobbish for wanting to handpick their candidates. Yo, wake up, okay? They're doing this for you, okay? They do this entire process for your benefit. Would you really be happy to find yourself at a tea party if you're a rabid coffee drinker? No. I don't think you really get the most out of it, right? You know, do you ever go to a party and then realize you're about, you know, 15 years too old for the crowd? Yeah. You know, you take your little cousin to a, like, you know, one of those birthday parties, you know, you feel kind of left out. The people looking at you, you know, thinking, you know, does this guy work there? Is he, you know, you get what I'm saying? You know, you know how about if you really wanted to eat at a sushi restaurant? And then somebody took you to a barbecue for two years. You see where I'm getting at? Okay. The schools have to filter candidates out. Choose the ones that will make up the diversity that will benefit you the most. They have to ensure their classes are filled with eager students who will make the difference for each other. At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's all about the student. Okay. It's not an elitist or separatist separatist conspiracy it's nothing like that you know they need to ensure that your time and your efforts and your money have not gone to waste by attending a school not within your caliber or fit you know all this is to say that in the end when you graduate from your nba wouldn't you rather have spent that precious time somewhere you loved rather than just something you did okay that's the whole idea you know an experience that you loved. As we go along with this interview podcast, you're going to listen to a lot of the alumni talking about their their experience. You know, and all of them are going to say it was just amazing. Amazing. So students, you know, ask me, you know, Mateo, how do I make the best of this application process? Simple answer. Start early. You will want to have three to four months before your school's deadlines to start your essays and also to collect your recommendation letters. You know, that is, considering that you've already taken your TOEFL and GMAT proficiency tests and then achieved the scores you need to apply. If not, then your first step is to get to that educational train, get on that educational train and then bust your brain cells to score as high as possible. You know, if you don't know where to start, well, this this podcast, you know, as this podcast develops, I'll go deeper into all of these questions and provide you with as much as with as much information as possible. But another fantastic all-in-one tool you have is consulting offices. Now, there are AGAC certified consulting offices all over the world who can walk you through this application process and prepare you for the tests. And trust me, trust me. You will want to get face-to-face consulting uh, from top consultants near your home, okay? Uh, So they can tailor uh, this process to your needs. That's the most important thing. You know, a lot of offices have amazing professors who can provide excellent services to help you tackle these proficiency tests. You know, and if you feel that it is too high of an investment for you at the time, you know, which in many cases is true, then... I recommend heading over to some free resources you can find online. There's my favorite one, the GMAT Club. Uh, look, hey, I don't know anyone there. Uh, I don't know the owners or anything. You know, I'm not here to promote something. I'm trying to give you guys some amazing stuff, uh, some great resources. Okay, uh, And in my experience, I, I've found that the GMAT Club is, is packed, packed full of information you know don't let the name fool you it's not just about the gmat you know they have an amazing forum with like thousands of members just like you you know who can also provide advice insights you know important information like deadlines and you know school notifications uh school rankings how many people applied you know and then they also provide test prep material and then links to all the information you would need 
All right. I'm working on uh, trying to provide you guys with some sort of a crash course uh, with, you know, for, for TOEFL and GMAT. But, you know, obviously, since I wouldn't be actually giving the class, it's more of a general, uh, um, you know, general type of, uh, of video. That's the kind of idea that I'm working on right now for you guys. But my, you know, your best bet is if you don't, if you don't have the money to invest, then check out the re free re resources. All right, the GMAT Club. Uh, I'll have their link up on the on the uh, show notes page of this of this podcast episode. All right. Now, citizens, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, this is all the time that I'm going to have for you today. Uh, but there is much more coming your way. Okay, and I'll do my absolute best to provide you with all the information that you would possibly need, you know, for you to be accepted into your top choice, all right? Uh, meanwhile, you know, send me your feedback and questions at www.thembawire.com. Uh, if you have someone, you know someone who is an alumnus or is currently a student at a top school who would love telling their story on this podcast, send their emails over, you know, I would be happy to call them up, you know, set up a, set up an interview and then get them on the podcast. Cause you know, like I said, this entire thing was built for you guys. I want to, I want to help you. And, uh, you know, what I get out of this is uh, free speaking classes, <laughs> basically. All right. This is Mateo Chang signing off. Thanks for listening once again, and see you on the next episode of the MBA Wire. Thanks for tuning into the MBA Wire. Would you like to know more? Visit us online at the MBAWire.com today and leave your questions and feedback. While you're there, sign up for an exclusive free audio series to help you strengthen your MBA interview. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the NBA Wire. NBA Wire.